How's it going, you guys? Damocles here, and today I'm going to be telling you what the best settings are for mobile players in Pokemon Unite. As always, if you like this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below, liking and commenting, let me know what you think, and uh, hop into my Discord if you want to uh, chat or follow me on Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, so let's talk about the, uh, the mobile settings. They're a little bit different from the base Unite settings. I made a video all about that uh, before, but just going to break them all down for all you new mobile players, okay? Um, so frame rate, you're always going to want to keep your frame rate as high as humanly possible uh, because you just want that maximum response time. You don't want any lag time uh, while you're playing the game. In other games, you know, frame rate can sometimes affect how abilities work. You just always want to have it on high if possible. Brightness is a personal preference, of course. Outlines, I would consider keeping those on. It's basically going to just outline uh, various characters so that you can see them better in terms of the actual game vibrate that is just something that is a personal choice hide other players trainer names once matchmaking is complete i do that when i stream just so if i have a highlight reel clip i don't want to put people on blast uh, that's totally up to you too and colorblind support obviously personal preference as far as controls are concerned um your Basic control settings, opponent lock on priority, you want this to be at lowest remaining HP value, okay? Uh, lowest remaining HP value. Basically what this means is when you are basic attacking in Pokemon Unite, the default position for the game in terms of basic attacks is to just continuously hit the uh, like closest target. It does it by like range, right? But if there's multiple targets in range, multiple player targets in range, it's going to, this is going to make it so it prioritizes the person with the lowest actual HP value so that you don't let anybody get away for free um, the next choice is attack controls uh, put on advanced controls immediately no questions asked 100 percent put on advanced controls basically what this is going to do is instead of going and just basic attacking and you know if you're fighting a wild pokemon camp and you're fighting a uh, enemy player it's going to make it so you don't accidentally hit enemy players it's going to or excuse me it's going to make it so you don't accidentally hit wild pokemon camps um, basically there's this button down here um, that is going to allow you to singularly focus wild pokemon and then it's going to make it so your basic attack button you know singularly focuses uh, players. Does that make sense? So you 100% want to turn on this advanced controls. It should honestly be on by default in my opinion, uh, but if it's not uh, and it hasn't been switched over from your Switch player, you're brand new to the game, put on advanced controls because literally the only difference is it adds this little, uh, this little tiny attack button that allows you to have better target selection priority. So 100% put that on. Otherwise, you're going to just be praying that you hit the right target. So definitely do that. Automatic basic attacks, in my opinion, is a personal preference. I like to keep it on uh, just because I jungle and, you know, you saw it right there. Like when I'm explaining stuff or when I'm looking off screen, sometimes it's nice to be able to just press the button and just look away for a second and have the character continue to clear the jungle. So that's up to you. It, it's really personal preference. Um, lock on icon, 100% on mobile, put this on. Uh, if it was the normal Unite, like just normal Switch Unite setting, I wouldn't touch it. But for mobile, you want the lock-on icon on. And basically what the lock-on icon does is it makes it so um, when you are near a, a multiple opponents, multiple like player opponents, it's going to basically make a highlight uh, or show these icons above your attack indicators that, uh, you know, it would be right above where my Unite move and my Faint are right now. Um, and it's going to show the individual player icons. And what that's going to allow you to do is have better target selection. You can see this Gardevoir here. I'm not paying attention, but you saw the little icon that pops up when Gardevoir gets in range. Um, and so basically what that's going to allow you to do is in team fights, unlike most of the Switch players that don't play with lock-on on because it sucks on the Switch, it's actually really good on mobile. All you have to do is just tap it and it's going to make it so you, um, uh, excuse me, let me just jump over here and show you a little bit better. It's gonna make it, it's basically gonna draw a line to the target and show you uh, how to uh, like hit them. So let me just get a little closer. Come on, Gardevoir, let me sh be, be helpful here, goodness. Okay, you can see now all my attacks are going to be focused on that Gardevoir. 
So it's really, really, really helpful when it comes to target selection, target priority, and team fights. 100% if you're playing on mobile, this is your biggest advantage over Switch players, so always keep it on. It's gonna make it so you can switch targets easily in team fights and focus down targets rather than just going for the closest possible person like most uh, Switch players have to. So 100% put that on. It's, uh, you can see here, displays icons for nearby opposing Pokemon, tap Pokemon icon to attack that Pokemon. Definitely, definitely keep that on, okay? Uh, as far as move aim settings are concerned, this is basically just gonna determine how you actually aim at the target. Um, so you can go and make it so it, when you uh, want to hit, say, that Gardevoir, you can drag your move over to the target. Uh, this is kind of personal preference. Um, movement is just going to make it so it's going to go and hit wherever you're kind of like generally aiming at. I would suggest the icon because you're going to be using lo the lock on icons and that's going to make it so if you want to go and hit an electro web on a certain person, you just press the button and then you just move it over, you know, to the Gardevoir, move it over to the Snorlax. So definitely do that. In motion pursuit distance. Uh, this is kind of just like an auto pursuit feature. In my opinion, it's personal preference. Some people like to put it on melee just so that they don't accidentally like turn around and hit somebody. But again, totally personal preference in my opinion, totally up to you. I turn in motion pursuit mode off so that I don't have that kind of issue. Um, but that you kind of just gotta mess around with it yourself and uh, decide for yourself. Um, as far as scoring controls, 100% put on press button, in my opinion. Uh, it's going to make it so you don't have to hold down in order to actually score a goal. You can just press it once, and it's going to automatically start scoring the goal for you. You don't, you, don't, And it frees up your hands to be able to do other things, look around the map, etc., etc. So I would highly suggest putting a uh, press button on instead of... Um, instead of hold button down, which I believe is the default. Uh, move canceling controls, again, this is one of the things that's up to you. I kind of like the slide to, uh, I, I kind of like the slide to icon a little bit, uh, just because it lets you be really direct and you don't have the potential of like accidentally messing up any kind of like aiming or anything like that, but it's totally up to you. Um, I don't know, I like, it, again, it's another one that's kind of personal preference, um, but the slide away icon allows you to be a little bit quicker, in my opinion. So maybe if you if you want the, that speed, uh, go with the slide away option. But if you want to, uh, you know, be this Gardevoir is just saucing me right now. Uh, if you want to go and uh, be like more precise, go with the other option where you can scroll up and just dump it in a uh, in like a little cancel icon. I'll show you that in a second once I respawn. La -di -da, -di da di da Okay. So if I have Blaze Kick, I would just go and I would pull it up to the top right where this red X is, and it's going to cancel Blaze Kick. Again, totally, totally up to you. And as far as the other options are concerned, the move panel sensitivity, I would just put, turn it up to max 100%. I think it's just better that way. This is because the move panel is basically what you're going to be like pressing in order to actually use your attack. So you want it to be responsive in my opinion. I don't know. It's again, it's one of those things that's kind of personal preference, but I think just in general, it's a lot better if you actually just, when you press the button, it's going to be really snappy. So I would highly suggest putting up as high as humanly possible. Camera follows moves. This is basically going to make it so if you have any kind of long range move, the camera is just going to slightly tilt off center um, and try and follow the direction of that move. It gives you a little bit more um, visibility when you're actually casting. So I would just in general, make sure you have that on. It's again, it's just going to help you. It's going to give you that little edge and this game is all about little edges right little advantages um, and so in my opinion uh, putting on camera follows moves is going to make it just so you have that little bit more range and visibility you don't have to just blindly cast like longer range abilities uh, so i would i would highly suggest putting that on uh, move aim follows move direction this is basically if you're using like a character that has dashes or anything like that um, it's going to make it, actually I have flame charge up right now. Uh, it's gonna make it so the direction that you're moving is the first input that it takes. So you basically have like two options. You can either go and just have it like cast, you know, if you're not really moving at the closest available target, like it normally does, it has it snap to, snap to the target, or if I'm moving, it's automatically going to go and uh, default to the uh, to the direction that I'm moving. So I think that is uh, really nice. 
uh, really nice to have. And just in terms of snappiness, in terms of your response time, which is everything, uh, it having it so you have multiple options, but the first option is going to be whatever direction you're moving is uh, the superior option in my opinion. So I would highly suggest uh, turning that on. Move aim snaps to nearby targets. That goes hand in hand with that one. Um, like I said, basically your move aim is going to be able to snap to nearby targets, but you can also uh, basically override it by moving. Makes sense? So like you have two options. If you want to just immediately press it, it'll go with where you're, where you're going. If you want to like press it just hold it down a little bit and then use it. It's going to go and snap to the nearby target. So I like having both of these on. So you kind of have, you have more options to deal with. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Uh, camera sensitivity. I would turn that up not to like at the absolute highest, in my opinion. Uh, it's a little bit different when it's on mobile, um, but basically your camera sensitivity is like how fast you can actually go and like scroll across the map and everything. Um, and so you don't want it to be super slow because you want it to be snappy, but also if you turn it up to absolute max, it goes really, really, really fast and sometimes it's uncontrollable. Uh, so you kinda, in my opinion, you just wanna be able to go and have it at a nice, like decent, um, you know, decently high range so that you can snap and be quick about it, but not uh, totally lose control of your camera. And panel placement, this is just, this is 100% personal personal preference. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life in that situation. <laughs> uh, show trainer name above HP gauge, totally up to you. Like I said, I have my stuff off so people can't see, you know, like people's names. Uh, boosted attack gauge, 100% you need to put this on. 100% put it on. Uh, all it's going to do is it's every single Pokemon in the game has an enhanced attack, right? It's usually their third auto attack. It does something special. And you want to know when, like what part of your auto attack chain you are in so that you can fully take advantage of that enhanced attack. And all this does is put these two little um, like dots underneath your HP bar that let you know what part of the auto chain you are in so that you can better tell, you know, when your uh, enhanced attack is actually going to come out. I can, you can see it right underneath Cinderace right now. My next attack is going to be enhanced attack, deal more damage. You saw that. And then now that I'm hitting, it just is constantly, you know, increasing and, and decreasing once I actually use that enhanced attack. So uh, highly, highly, highly suggest putting boosted attack gauge on. It's one of those things that it has no negative impacts on your gameplay. So just put it on. There's no reason not to. Uh, show cooldown decimal values, 100% put this on. This is just more information for you. And information is obviously power in MOBAs. Um, and it might not, you might not think it makes a big difference, but in my opinion, it does. It basically just makes it so when your moves are coming off of cooldown, instead of just going like three, two, one, zero, it's going to do three, two, one, you know, 0.8 or 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. You know what I mean? It's going to give you a better indicator of your what your actual cooldown is. So we'll see five, four, three, two, one, and then it shows you that actual cooldown. So you can see the precise moment your move is going to come off cooldown. You don't have to just rely on uh, the icon itself and trying to uh, play a guessing game there. So again, it's just another little thing that has zero negative impacts on your gameplay, but it just gives you more information on the battlefield. And that is everything people. Um, highlight outlines for opposing Pokemon on screen edges. I would just there's no reason not to keep that on. Again, it's just something that applies that, you know, that gives you more information, makes opposing Pokemon easier to, uh, to see. Um, and that is pretty much it guys. The, uh, the other settings are just audio settings. It's totally up to you whether or not you want to have those on or not. Some people, uh, like to play without the, uh, like background music or the announcers so that they can just focus on the actual abilities and listen to their cooldowns and stuff like that. But again, personal preference. Uh, but overall, my suggestions, the ones that I actually suggested, I would highly recommend putting them on guys like it'll really change the way you play the game. And because you have advantages when you're playing on mobile. And one of those advantages, the main advantage is target selection. And, uh, you know, move snappiness target priority in comparison to the switch players. And so you need to take advantage of that. And this is going to allow you to uh, fully take advantage of that. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, 
or you have any video suggestions for me personally, drop them in the comments below or hop into my Discord and let me know. I'm always open to suggestions and I make a bunch of beginner content and builds and guides. So please go check out my catalog of guides. I'll put all the details in the description below um, and uh, lots of beginner stuff, lots of stuff that will help you figure out how to play the game. We've got like the best moves for every Pokemon. I've got, uh, you know, just beginner basics for every roll. You guys get the whole deal. Um, and make sure if you want any awesome Team Shiny Pokemon merch, hit the Merch Land link in the description below. That's it for me, guys. Adamocles out.